The cycads are the most at-risk organism on the planet. To help save these rare plants, a team of botanists and horticulturists are embarking on a multi-day expedition. We're really setting out to find these species that we don't know if they're going to be here. So it's like this quest and discovery. Sometimes we'll find exactly what we're looking for, but sometimes you just don't. Can the team manage to find these rare plants? The locality and what is growing in this area is a really key indicator of occurring cycads. So the National Herbarium of New South Wales has all of these records and many previous botanists would describe the habitats and the species that occur around these cycads. Now, the type of plants that are growing in the area, the trees, the soil, the topography of the land. The real sandy soil, hey. As soon as we came over this ridge here, we noticed that there were some heathy plants, good indicator species of where we might find cycads. With all of these indicators, it's a promising sign that the team might finally find what they're looking for. What the f Cycads come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. The largest species in the world is found in Queensland, and it can grow to a whopping 16 metres tall. But our team is looking for a much smaller cousin, native to New South Wales, the Macrosamia heteromera, and it reaches the lofty height of 100 centimetres. Well, that. Yeah, see, there's two of them. Liquid gold! And we're so excited to find this. They're so infused that we've actually found seedlings. We can't wait to bring them back to the Botanic Garden. So we've actually found a mother plant that's actually produced seedlings. So I've actually, some of these seedlings are actually gonna come back to our living collection. So they'll actually go to Sydney and to, to some of the Melbourne Botanic Gardens. When you find a cycad, you'll find more. Oh, right there. Keen Eye James found the first one, and then when you get up in further investigation, there's it's just littered with seedlings all through here. Just really excited to be here and be able to find this species growing in its natural habitat. Having found the first thriving cycad society, the real work for the team begins. From our primary um, Macrothamia heteromera plant that we've just sampled, we are now finding five other DNA samples from separate plants that are around five metres from our original plant. Try, try and get a gauge of the demographics of the, of the population. Uh, we'll try and sample uh, male and female. We'll also try and get an idea if pollinators are present, um, the number of, of plants in the population, and, the, and also the health of, of the population. In the right conditions, we'll be lucky enough to um, collect seed and seedlings. But also, we'll, importantly, we'll get herbarium specimens for three botanic gardens that are on this expedition. And then it will give us an opportunity to also monitor those populations. Got this beautiful specimen of a lease. When you see these in the landscape, it actually looks like clumping, big clumping grasses, but it's a site cad. If, you have a, if I can get this in a bit, the, just the beautiful structure. Look at that red stem in there. And the type specimen was collected in here in the 1800s from around about the same sort of location that we've been out today. This one is a Petromera, yeah? Yep. Documenting the populations, collecting data, oh, yeah, and that, species that, samples that. like this is the only way we can ensure more cycad species don't go extinct. In places like South Africa, there are numerous species that are now extinct in the wild. A very good example of this is the elusive Encephalitis woodyi. Part of the cycad family, Encephalitis woodyi, is one of the rarest plants in the world and serves as a sad and looming threat of what would happen to other cycad species. Surviving the mass extinction of dinosaurs and multiple ice ages, in 1895, botanist John Medley Wood 
found it on a steep slope in the remote regions of the Nagoya Forest in Southern Africa. It looked different from the other trees. So Dr. Wood had some stems removed with one sent to the Royal Botanic Gardens at Kew, London, where it grew for the next 110 years. This Encephalitis woodii is a male, like all cycads. He is a single sex, so needs a female mate to reproduce. Since it was collected by John Medley Wood, other botanists have searched extensively in the forests and woods of Southern Africa to find him a female partner. They haven't found another single specimen. But with recent advancements in technology, there's new hope. A team of experts are using drones with special sensors to photograph South Africa's Nagoya forest from above. These images are then analysed by AI, trained to recognise E. Woodyi's unique shape. This high-tech approach offers a new chance to find a female and save the species from extinction. For now, he sits in London, waiting for a mate that may no longer exist. The loneliest plant alive, the last of his kind. So what I'm doing now is just putting some pre-moistened moss on the root system to keep it moist while we're traveling around. A botanic garden is, is like a museum or like a library. It's a repository of information and material. And a botanic garden is no different. It's a collection of living species. Botanic gardens don't just maintain beautiful plant and flower displays or provide a picturesque place for a walk. They also serve a really important purpose. Like here at the Royal Botanic Garden Sydney, all botanic gardens hold living collections. And this provides a critical way to maintain plants away from their natural habitat. For unique plants like cycads whose seeds can't be stored in a seed bank, living collections are essentially the only insurance policy against their extinction in the wild. Without the remote field work done by botanists and horticulturists over the last 200 years collecting for living collections, many more plants would already be extinct. By having living collections within botanic gardens and botanical institutions like ours, we can ensure that if a species does become extinct in the wild, we have that species backed up within our collections that can be used for future reintroductions back into the wild. This is why one of the most crucial elements of this expedition is to collect specimens, bring them back, grow them, and then put them in botanic gardens as part of the living collection to help save all Australian cycad species. By having the material within the living collection, we can grow them on. When they become mature, we can pollinate those and produce more seed and we can distribute that seed to other scientific botanic gardens around Australia to help conserve these species. Not many people actually get to come out to the Pilliga State Forest and we're all out here doing stuff we do and we love, you know, our passion is about plants and conservation. I love this type of work because it's, it's an opportunity to bring plants into the botanic gardens that people might not normally see. But it's also really important to provide a message of conservation and education. Looking for these plants and things is probably the best job anybody can do in the world. Doing this research and working together for that same interest is pretty incredible. Even as the team encounters cycads in their natural habitats on this trip, the ongoing and never-ending battle to preserve them remains a top priority for them. This trip has been actually an incredible success. We've found every single species we've looked for and we've also got so many things to come back to help conserve some of these plants ex situ. After a successful trip, the team prepares to safely bring the collected material back to the botanic gardens. So this is what I've been collecting the last few days. Here we're just on a stock take. Got them in tubes just to keep them safe and upright till we get them to our nursery. 
and then they'll be potted on and then used part of the conservation project for the Macrosania collection. Continuing this important field work and maintaining living collections is crucial for preserving all plants and the entire ecosystem that relies on them. One of the aims that we have as a team is to conserve all of our New South Wales Macrosamia species. And when these are all found in Botanic Garden, anybody in the public can see these plants and we can help conserve them if something was to happen to these plants in the future. Keeping cycad specimens in living collections such as right here at the Royal Botanic Garden Sydney is vital. And this is just one of the thousands of rare and endangered native flora that botanic gardens across Australia and indeed the world are actively trying to document, understand and ultimately conserve. So that if they go extinct in the wild, they're not gone forever.